you want to be a boss. You're going to be a legend. You're going to go down as one of the greats. Well, welcome to the place where all of that begins. See, for me, I started off in the booth. I was writing rhymes. I was coming up with concepts. And we were putting in long nights to make those dreams come true. But along the way, I learned some lessons. That the real power in the game wasn't in front of the camera. It's behind the camera. And as I learned how to go from an entertainer into an entrepreneur, a burning desire to spread that knowledge to others who were just like me started to brew. And then it started to bubble until it overflowed. And the first thing I did was go find other bosses, other people who were like-minded and had a vision and wanted to change the culture forever to provide the information and the resources and the network necessary to change the game. So we formed Boss Talk Nation, CEOs from different area codes, people who are the greats and the goats in their lane. And we put it all together. Because like the great Chuck D said, it'll take a nation of millions to hold us back. And now that we got Boss Talk Nation, you're going to need a lot more than that. Yeah, what's going on? <clears throat> what's going on, people? What's going on? It's another week. This is Boss Talk Special Edition. I hope you enjoyed, you know what I'm saying, last week's show. We had some dope feedback. Um, you know, we're trying to bring y'all stuff that's different. We should have a great guest tonight. Should be a great and interesting conversation. But while in the meantime, in between time, just checking in with y'all, seeing how everybody doing. Um, you know, hopefully your week is is good and productive. And you're getting that money, most important. You know, that's the main thing, you know that uh, we all out here for on the grind is to get that money. And, you know, like I said, man, it's a lot of things going on in the world. Um, you know, finally, they got the stimulus, uh, you know, signed as far as out of the Senate today. Pretty sure y'all heard about that. But what you're not really hearing about is a lot of the concessions that had to be made. So, you know, basically the minimum wage was cut out. People on the surface is like, oh, I don't care about that. But there was other funding and stuff that, um, you know, we need uh, that was cut out. And they're basically just trying to pacify you with this $1,400, uh, which is great. I mean, people need whatever they can get. But, you know, let's see. It's not going to get signed until Friday. Um, and what the what the next move with that is um, that they saying the next big thing that's coming up is going to be the Obamacare. Uh, provisions are going to run out in about a year from now, right around the time of the midterms. So, you know, that should be the next big thing going on to keep your eye on. But even with this stimulus, we have to make sure, you know, what they've been sliding in that y'all not paying attention to is the passports um, and the COVID IDs. And this is everything that people were talking about, you know, last year and people were saying that they were crazy and you know what I mean? And, and um, you know, that was a conspiracy theory. And, you know, people just didn't know what they were talking about. So now that travel and things are opening back up, uh, you know, people are starting to hear about it on the news, um, you know, and, you know, you know, I always get the scoop for y'all. So I got something right here just to, you know, prove to y'all that, you know, it's really going down out here. Like, People got to start getting prepared, you know what I mean, for for what's to come, because if you're not prepared, you're going to end up in, in a situation where um, you have no choices, right? Your choices are being made for you. Now, nobody wants to, you know, have their choices made for them. You know what I mean? You always would want, you know, things to be out there where you can decide for your family what's best for you and your family. You know what I mean? Not somebody else deciding for you. So um, just to show you that we always on point, we always got our receipts. I'm going to share the video real quick and let you know, you know, what's going on out here. I got a couple other things, you know, we might could, uh, you know, take a laugh at, but this is not funny. I just want y'all to see so you can see what's going on because it's, it's a lot going on. All right. So 
You know how I always do. I got the footage. I keep the footage on deck. I keep the receipts. Let's watch this. This is a video from CNN proving what I'm saying, y'all. Everything is straight fit acts. No conspiracy needed. All right, so let's get to it. Might take a minute to connect. Ugh. Know it. Dita's ain't getting no play over here. <laughs> But you know we gotta play, we gotta put up with the commercials. But um, but anyway, like I said, y'all, you know it's a lot going on. When you see this video, you are gonna see exactly what I'm talking about. And then we gonna we gonna get into it for a second. Let me see, let's get back to the video. It should be uh finishing up now. The same time. Well, that's what it feels like to me anyway. Hey, see your papers. I don't think I have the money. In that case, you have to ask you to come along. From Casablanca to today, a demand to produce personal documents can be uncomfortable. But post-pandemic, it's something we'll all likely have to get more and more comfortable with. We could be asked to show proof we've had the shots in order to get on an airplane, go to a concert, or go back to work. Joining me now is medical ethicist Arthur Kaplan, a professor at NYU. Um, so explain why you think, uh, basically, that this is the future and we should be comfortable with it. Well, I'm sure that the uh, future holds vaccine passports for us, partly to protect against the spread of COVID and it rebounding. There are many countries, as you were discussing earlier, that have low rates of COVID, Australia, India, Nigeria. Some countries improving fast, Great Britain, the US, other countries lagging and trying to do lockdowns. As vaccines become available, the best way to control the spread, the best way to control new outbreaks and perhaps even new variants is to demand proof of vaccination before entry. And you know, it's not a new idea. We have it for yellow fever. There are about more than a dozen countries that say you can't come in uh, if you uh, haven't been vaccinated against yellow fever, and many others require you to show proof of vaccination if you transit through those countries. Um, what about the concerns that many people have about privacy, about the privacy yeah. of their health data? That is this, you know, is there a slippery slope here? Okay, I'm okay. I'm, I'm comfortable telling you whether or not I have COVID, but do I, does that mean that it becomes okay to ask about other things? Well, there is always a danger of a slope, but I think here what's different is traditionally we want to protect health information because if someone finds out you have an illness or a disease, they may discriminate against you. They may penalize you. They may say you can't get a job, you can't get insurance, you can't get disability insurance, you can't get life insurance. With a COVID... All right, hold up. <laughs> hold up. You know I had to do it. <laughs> so you hear what they're saying right now, right? You can't get, they said, okay, yeah, we need it, we need it for the COVID. But then at the end of the day, you know, well, what about if you have any other diseases and why, why would they need you? Because once this starts, it's not going to stop, y'all. Once it starts, once it starts, it's not going to stop. We don't need to see no more of him. You know what I'm saying? He looked like the Grim Reaper anyway. But this is why I'm going to keep putting these receipts in your face. So I might start calling this the receipt show because what people don't understand is, there's a, there's, it's a war going on outside. No man is safe from. You could run, but you can't hide forever. A lot of us are thinking and thinking of this as if, oh, I'm good. That's over there. Oh, I didn't catch it, so I'm all right. Oh, you know, my kids is homeschooled, so I ain't got to worry about it. Oh, I don't travel that much anyway. But what happens when you can't go to the mall? What happens when you can't go back in a the movie theater? What happens when you can't go in any to, to the supermarket? Right. So two things are going to happen. Your movements are going to be tracked and restricted. That's the big play. Right. And number two, the, the resources and the services that you're going to have to depend on to avoid getting swept up in this stuff uh, are going to be able to charge you whatever they want. They're going to have you at a premium. Because people are not realizing that this was the whole play so that we could now when something remember what I told y'all last week never let a good crisis go to waste you feel me and this is this this is why I'm saying what I'm saying that you know people people don't get it 
People don't understand it. People are not paying attention to it. People are trying to ignore it. People are trying to stay, stay distracted. People are trying to stay in their little bubbles. People are just putting their heads down, thinking if they just work and, and they pray and eat their vitamins, nothing's going to happen to them. As soon as he talked about, he said, you might as well get used to the reality of traveling with these COVID passports. Now, they did they didn't say, well, maybe, you know, this is what might happen. This is what they said is going to happen. All for a vaccination that if they get the, they, they were talking about what they call herd immunity, which means if a, a big enough portion of the population, you know, what I'm saying gets vaccinated, then by and by and large, it, it affects everybody. I got my guests in the building. We're going to get right to this topic real quick. Let me get them on the stage. My man, Ken Fokia, Sean, say what's up to the people, man. What's going on with you, bro? What's, what's going on, Ken Folk? Just moving and grooving through these streets out here in Atlanta, man. How you doing, my man? I'm good, man. Pleasure to have you on the show tonight, man. I know you moving and grooving out. You know, we're going to respect your time. I was just telling the people about these COVID passports, man. Um, you know, I know you just had a big event with the All-Star in your city last week. You know, yeah. let's talk about, you know, how, how, what that was like from a from a real person on the ground, and then we can get into the passports. Well, it's like, it, you, know, I'm, you know, it's funny because one of the guys that was, uh, that threw the event with me, he hit me today and was like, man, I'm not feeling well. It's like, he's like, he feels like, you know, he might be coming down. We'll see if he checks himself to the hospital and see if he got COVID. You know what I mean? Now, right. when I had the event on Friday, but I had to check in to my, uh, I had to go quarantine because, uh-huh. uh, because of, you know, because of the, uh, because of, I had to go, I'm shooting a movie down here. So when you shoot a movie, right. they they make you go to quarantine, isolation for three days and get tested every day before going on right. set. So I was able to be in, I had to go on quarantine the whole All-Star weekend. So I didn't get a chance really to do all the festivities and whatnot. You know what I mean? But I'm thankful now because, when I hear that my man's sick, I'm like, damn, I would have been with my man the every spot he went to. You know what I mean? So it, but so I'm thankful that I wasn't. And then, like, I was, you know, it's just it's, it's kind of weird because in Atlanta, it doesn't feel like COVID is still, it's like, is COVID happening or not? You know what I'm saying? It's right. like, it's weird. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, so it's just, it's just weird, man. It's just like, this shit is happening. People are getting sick, but... People are still moving and grooving around, like you know what I mean. I was just looking at the video. My man just sent me a Facetime. He in the club. This is still popping out here now. You know what I mean? Right. right. So it's just, yeah. it's just weird. It's, it's, it's a little weird. You know what I mean? It's, it's a little weird. How yeah, man. Going, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Definitely, definitely. I mean, it's, especially with what's going on, you know, in your part of the country versus you know up in. I'm in the Northeast. So you so know, it's super locked down. It's like it's locked down. It's locked down. Yeah. Right? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We yeah. on. We on. Yeah. Great. In the hole right now, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> you know, we can't yeah. So it's like yin and yang. But you know, we 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 appreciate you coming on, and I wanted to get to a few topics tonight. You know, while we uh we got your time, um, what we were talking about was first off, you know, let's get into your history, um, as an artist. You know, what I'm saying because I know that you uh are somebody who has had a unique journey in the music business and now you're doing all all types of things so let's just start there and then we can jump into some of these other topics okay okay well, yeah for sure let's do it all right so let the people know who you know people know who you are but for people who may not be familiar you know to give them a little backstory as to how you got started in the business and now i've become well, I- a boss I got started in music um, by my, I was uh, stopping beats for Drama Boy, and really that was like well no for starting him I started my own independent label first, but then after that um, you know it was it wasn't it was, a, it was a startup so it wasn't making a lot of money at first, but then right. um, the, the the hustle was I went I met this guy named Dino Valle and I went to New York and I started and I sold him some beats you know what I mean. Um, and, and that changed my perspective. Like, I'm trying to do this label and put these artists out, but I'm an underfunded label, so I'm like, let me just sell beats. And at that time, I ended up selling Drummer Boys beats, and I ended up, you know, selling beats to Rough Riders. I had a song deal with Rough Riders back when Rough Riders was Rough Riders, and it was the thing. Right. And then right. and then I ended up getting a publishing deal with Universal Music Publishing, and then I ended up, uh, from there, I had, then I got funded because I had the money at that point. So then I started my label, Rap Hustlers, and Rap Puzzlers was the label that signed Yo Gotti. And we okay. put out Yo Gotti's first album. 
like album, not the, his, his first national album that went big was was this album called Life. It had Lil Jon and uh and and and, and, and Lil, Lil Flip on it, and I and I produced the whole thing and and was doing my P Diddy kind of marketing strategy with that particular record. So, um, and then I put out his first videos. It was me, Eight Ball, and um uh, and um Skinny Pimp. The record was called TVs. So. We we broke Yo Gotti, you know what I mean? My my label, Rap Hustle, is, you know what I mean? That my startup, and um, so then basically uh, from there, um, TVT had bad business, so you know it was just you know it, it came between me and Yo, and um, and then the Skinny Pimp album, it did good. All the stuff we sold did good, but we did like two hundred thousand records, but we didn't get paid for them because TVT was with the was, was with the with the creative with the creative accounting man, and they really like, you know, it was just it it went all bad, so. So I um, end up losing a lot of money or whatever, right? And um, I decided to be the artist myself. I right. putting out Yo Gotti. Right. I've been putting out Lil Chat. I've been putting out Skinny Pimp. I've been putting out Criminal Mains, people like that. Uh, Against the Black and Skinny Pimp albums that I put out. It was like, all right, well, we try to be the artist myself because I would always feature on their on their artists, on their their projects anyway. So it's right. like, okay, well, then let me, let me just be the artist then because I, I had a fan base of people that were following me. But I hadn't put out my own thing yet, so, um, so, so it was like, all right, well, then let me do that. So I did that, and in doing so, my first single, uh, "Respect My Fresh," it popped off. It it, it worked, and then um, and so did Stunner Frames, and so did I Be Everywhere with Jim Jones, and then I then I got my solo deal with Universal Motown with Sylvia Rohn. I signed with her back in '07, and I uh, put out this song called "So Crispy," and that right. song that song popped off. And then, um, and then, and then, so that's that's kind of how the Kia Shine music of uh, solo music ran came. Right. Like I, even after I was a CEO and, and had Gotti and all that, then I went to being the artist. And then I had a few, uh, about five jam of the weeks. So, uh, Checking my fresh was one. Me, Young Joe, Mano, Fabulous, and then I co-wrote Drake's best I ever had back in '09 or 2010. And you know, so it's like. Um, so the writing, you know, the, the writing, then after that, you know, my mom and my dad and my, and my little brother passed, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it was, so, so when my mom died of cancer in 2012, my dad died of cancer 2013 and my little brother died, died of, you know, he was riding the car with a friend of his in Denver and, uh, the friend fell asleep at the wheel and he ended up dying on impact. So I took a lot of L's or whatever, as far as like losses, as far as my family members, but you know, there is no end, energy never dies. My mom and all three of those individuals really wanted me to get into the uh, into the acting, into the film and television. So, um, so because of them, I started to I got me a uh, acting coach, and I started to uh, to start to do that. I got booked for a pilot, and then out of my acting class, I got a pilot, and I just was turned on to it since then. And then I ended up scoring a uh, Superfly, you know, scoring a. Uh, um, um, uh, Leon, I played Leon on Star, the TV show Star on Fox, uh, right. season three. I played Leon in that joint. I did, did, did like a seven episode run. Then I did Green Leaf, uh, season four, episode two. Then I did, um, what else did I do? I did, I did, um, I've done a, a whole year, the, the, um, Red Dead Redemption, um, the, the video game. I'm a character in that game, Red Dead Redemption 2. And then, right. um, um, yeah, so I just been acting. I just been like, you know, been doing that thing or whatever as well. And then I started my blog, which was, which was coffeewithkenfolk dot com, which is just inspiration for your situation. It's a cup full of good positivity with me, you know. And the coffee is always black, Jack, nothing but big facts. So you know, for me, you know what I mean. I started the because the, because I, I, you know, I, I, the public speaking and inspirational speaking is really strong for me. So I just like started to do that as well. Just being a full out overall total creative, you know what I'm saying, like not, like being able to just, you know, do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthens me, so I just like, okay, let me just do all of it then, so, you know, um, so that's, that's what that's what I've been doing, I've just been like, you know, um, and then like from that, the Coffee with Kimbo kind of part, like, I've been doing a lot of merch, I sell a lot of merch on my site, so if you're going to go to coffeewithkimbo.com, a lot of, a lot of, I sell a lot of merch on my site, but, but then, you know, I kind of parlayed that over to a pivot at the site, to Clubhouse, and now right. Coffee with Kim Folk is a really popping room on Clubhouse, along with Industry Connect, which is another show I co-host on Clubhouse. So you know, um, so yeah, and then now I now I just shot a I just shot a TV show for Eric Sedgwick Entertainer. It's called The Johnson. That's coming out this year, and I got a new movie I'm shooting right now called They Come Tyrone with Jamie Foxx, 
Kiefer Sutherland and uh, John Boyega, who just won that Emmy. Uh, I'm in a movie with them right now in Atlanta. So, you know, but then, so, and then I'm back to the music, respectfully. You know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, I, I still write. I, I still, I'm in the studio all the time. I, I work out at Tree Sound Studios here in Atlanta. Okay. So I still, you know, I still do the publishing thing, like the, the publishing business of music. So I, I broke a lot of publishing deals, you know what I mean? And um, so that's kind of the behind the scenes things that that I do, you know what I mean? As far as uh, uh, the behind the scenes broker and publishing deals, getting artists, uh, producers, publishing deals and things like that. And I got a publishing deal for my new new publishing company, Three in the Tree. So me and the owners of Tree Sound Studios got a publishing company, and we got that signed through Sony as well. So we just been, you know, I just been just, just been playing, burning candles on both ends, man. Just, just working, you know, and just like you know, there are people that still like want to hear me musically. And I'm like, okay, well then, like, you know, let me, let me, uh, you know, I feel like I've got a, a couple of records that I'm that I, that I that I believe in, and that I feel like can make an impact. One is called Up to Something, another one is called Respectfully, or, or Yes, Erski. Um, so just a, a couple A and B side, like the old school. I drop, I'm, I'm gonna drop a A and B side maxi single real quick. You know what I'm saying? Like old school vibes. And just be able to, um, you know, put some music out there too, man. Like I said, man, I'm a creative man, and, and so I'm, I'm trying. To, I have to do all things, you know, saying creatively, you know, what I mean, to keep inspiring myself and pushing myself. So that's what I'm doing, man. In a nutshell, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. I mean, that's a lot, brother. That's a resume and a half, man. You've been, you've been multitasking in this pandemic for sure. You know man, what I mean? God is, and, and God is the God. Get all praise and glory. He is the one continuing to write my story. You know what I mean? It, it, it is. Right. Him, get, it is him. So I just, I'm thankful to be able to, you know, be able to move and groove and maneuver and turn my contacts into contracts, man. You know. Yeah, that's what's up, man. And and you dropped a lot of jewels right there just in giving them that introduction to you, to your, to your work, to your body of work. And uh, what I was gonna say is, what a lot of people don't realize is, you know, the first time I saw you was on BET. And the first thing, you know, I recognize you had a different style than what most people would think of a traditional Southern artist, you know what I mean, coming out. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, one thing I do like is that, you know, you come out of Memphis. From what I understand, you might have been somewhere before that. But, I, you know, when no, I was. Memphis is where, no, Memphis is where I'm from. I'm, I'm from right. the town. I'm from Memphis, it, Tennessee, North Memphis, Tennessee. That's what's that's up. You know what and yeah. I and I played I played ball for Memphis. You know what I'm saying? I went what? to school. Yeah. I went to, um, I yeah, like late 90s, 98, 99. You know what I'm saying? I was a top, yeah. bro. Bro, I was on campus South Hall going crazy down that piece. You feel oh, me? Oh, man, what? Heard up. Yeah, my, my, daughter go, my, my daughter's graduated from the University of Memphis this, this year. Congrats, man. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, man. Yes, indeed. Yeah, that was my first visit, too. Like, when I went on my first visit, you get your little scholarship offers, you know what I'm saying? And I yeah. went down. Bro, them bro, yo, they took me, look, the Ebony Lace, bro. That's all I'm going to say. Ebony I'm, Lace! Ebony Lace! I was like, yo, I'm sorry. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yo, all I can say is wow. So, we so, so, used to talk about Skinny Pimp, and I remember Player Fly, you know what I'm saying? All that real Nobody needs nobody. All I no. need is me and my dogs. So, for, oh, yes, indeed. Yo. Yes, indeed. They, yo, they be so turned up half the time. They be getting tossed out the club. And I'm like, yo, yeah, all these that, Yeah. It was crazy, man. So I just wanted to show you, man. I, I really, you know, been down there and felt the flavor and, you know, and know what and know the vibes, man. So but just talk about Memphis for a second as a music city, obviously the blues and all of that, but the hip hop history is really rich down there, man. Man, it's it, 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 a, it, a ball MJG, three six mafia, project pad. Um, 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 Tila. Um, you know, these are all old school guys, Gangsta Boo, Lil Chat, you know what I mean? And yeah. then the skinny pimps of the world, the gangsta blacks of the world, you know, like you got all of that. That's like, you know, the old school guys. But then nowadays, though, you right. got like, see, the thing about it, nigga, understand is about Memphis music, right? Okay, so you had A Ball MJG, you had 3 Six Mafia, okay? Right. And then so they had it on lock. These were the two. The, the 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 whole thing they had on lock right. After them came rap hustlers. Rap right. hustlers ushered in Yo Gotti and right. all the new nuances, and that's right. where Kia Shine came in at. Right. Then as a CEO, and then as you as you go to the to the later two thousands, 
Right. Then you got Kia Shine as, as an artist. And then right. after we break Yo Gotti and do all that, now after Yo Gotti, Yo Gotti's got Black Youngster, Black Boy JB, you know what I'm saying? You look me go, uh, uh, money bag yo, you know what I mean? So a lot of these things wouldn't be if we didn't do our thing. We opened the doors up for for the lay the blueprint for the Order Foundation because it was all ball MJG and Three Six Mafia only for Memphis and Dealer and those guys or whatever. So they had it on lock in the '90s. So we came with a new regime, you know what I mean? The musicians and then now you have two shikes. You got the the the, the big thirties. You got the you know, you got the guy Juicy Fruit. You got female Juicy Fruit coming out. You got, you know, you got new people from Memphis now that that, that are doing their thing all across the board now. You know what I mean? Kivo Money, Young Dolph, uh, Key Clock. You know what I'm saying? You got, yeah. you got, you got a lot of people from Memphis right now doing their thing that, that's on major labels now. You know what I mean? So it's it's a different day and age now, man. It's, it's good. It's good to see all of these individuals doing that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. Big shout to Matt yes, Sam. He always in the comments, you know what I mean, doing what he yeah, do. Yeah, I see, I see. I see he played, he said respectfully, that last cover was for uh, this song I got called Up to Something, though. It's right. a really, it's, it's a touching record. I, it's yeah. a really good record, man. That's what's up, man. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that you, you're doing so many things, but you're being effective and making an impact. You feel me? And it seemed like you just naturally have an aura of what you're doing as far as always being grounded in faith. Right. So talk about that real quick of, of how you basically center that and then everything kind of revolves around that. I mean, it is all starts with God. He is the one that is lining it all up. It's, it, he works through me. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is like, I believe you got to remain humble and you will fumble. And in life, your blessings won't crumble. You know what right. I mean? So. I think, like, that's how, you know, my mom used to always tell me you catch more bees with honey. So you got to, right. like, you know, you got to be able to be approachable on a level with the people, especially if you want to always know what the people want from you. You need to right. be able to be in touch with the people. The people need to understand, you know, you, you, you need to understand what people dig about your vibe. and how, You know, if you want somebody to subscribe to your vibe, they need to understand what your vibe is. And my vibe is just, it's just one that's, that's, that's more of about a faith walker, a faith talker, an individual that is not scared to acknowledge that, that God, you know what I'm saying, is, is, is the one who putting this all together, you know what I mean, and, and to come with some substance, you know what I'm saying, because a lot of these people got a lot of ice and no cake, a lot of sizzle, no shake, you know what I'm saying, a lot of fluff, a lot of fake, you know what I mean, and to me it's just about being able to be really authentically who I am. And what it's being exactly who I am, you know what I mean. And what I am, I, I, I love to inspire people. You know what I'm saying. I feel like people are gonna either drain you or they're gonna inspire you to become a higher you. So for me, I just want to be an inspiration for somebody's situation. And then hopefully, my song up to something will help them with whatever they're facing. You see what right. I'm saying? Like I do music. Now I do music because I love it. And I, but I have other ways to be able to make money. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm I know I'm making music at this point because I want to be able to to uh, to give the people something to be able to live with. Like if you right. listen to me on CoffeeWithKiffo.com and you follow what I've been doing with that, it's like okay, when you turn that app off and you and you go in your real life, I want to give you a song that you can be able to meditate that and, and, and vibe to and ride to. You know what I'm saying? And then then, then so that that that's that's me, man. I just Every it, it, the the thing about it, Memphis has a church on every corner, but it's got work on every corner. And for me, it's like I'm, a, you know, I've always been like, you know, about the, a lover of people and wanting to help people. You know what I'm saying? And not like it's not really necessarily about me. You know, it's about it's about seeing other people reach their thing. You know what I mean? And you know, so you know, I feel like if I can help give enough people what they want, somebody might turn around and give me what I want. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, so I just, I'm a giver, you know what I'm saying? So I just want to give, give my time, my energy, you know what I mean? I want to see somebody succeed. I want to I want to inspire a generation, you know? So that's what I'm doing is just trying to use my power or my influence and to, to be able to speak life and teach life, you know? Right, right. And that's that's powerful, man, what you just was saying. um, You know, before we did the interview, I was just doing some research and stuff, and I went to your IG, man. And I don't know, you might got another superstar in the family, man. 
Um, I saw your son do the tech review. So I, if it's oh, yeah, technique, technique, technique. You know I, mean? I wanted to share that with the people real quick, and then we could come right back and you give me the background. Yeah, we, oh, please, 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 right. cover more, man. Yeah, yeah, man. I got you. Um, I got technique you. is tech. Technique is uh. First of all, he's my son, and he's a creative. He's ill with the camera. He's ill with the editing. He's just really dope. You know what I'm saying? He's super dope, man. So like, you know, I just like, and he and he's a scared. I'm a scared dad. He's got a he's got a scholarship. It's scared. You know what I'm saying? He shot for everybody from Pan for, for Pandora to Wale to to you know, he shoots for everybody, man. But he's dope. He's really dope, and he's got his own blog. It's uh called TechniqueInc.com. Technique ink.com and um he's just really dope man he's a he's a dope young man he really is that's what's up let's give him some shine real quick we're just gonna play this little quick video for the people real quick all right yeah, yeah. do it do it play it for him let me show you what you can do and <laughs> 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 Yeah, man. So that was dope, man. I, I saw that and I said, I said, yo, we definitely got to show him some love on the show. You know what I mean? So, you know, good I take that, man. Thank you. No doubt. No doubt, bro. We always show love. So, you know, let the people know, you know, I know you got the new projects. You're talking about the acting and the rapping, but I wanted to speak to you because you definitely are somebody who have built a blueprint of branding. Right, and I see you got the coffee with kid folk shirt on. So talk you about respectfully, respectfully, definitely, man. So real quick, you know what I'm saying. I know I'm respecting your time. Let it. Let the people know what went into that. Because when I saw that, I said, "Oh, I see what he's doing." But let me see how he how he gonna break it down. Because that was a perfect play on a worldwide known brand, but you made it your own. So let the people know. Yeah, I mean, it's about it's just like when you sample records. If you sample a record. You sound the record because you want that sound to be familiar so you be able to pull the people into what you're doing. You want them to have a familiar, familiarity to it. So for me, it's like, okay, if I, if you see this, you're going to catch your eye. But then when you look closer, you're going to see, oh, it's Coffee with Kinfo. I'm, I'm just trying to get your attention. You know what I'm saying? And then the Coffee with Kinfo thing is literal because I'm a coffee drinker, but it's literal in the sense that what I'm trying to do is wake you up. Right. To what's going on. I'm trying to help you help you stay woke to what's going right. on. You know what I mean? Out here, whatever, to literally give you a wake up like coffee does. So it was a great match in brands. And like I said, it was just something that my wife is from Seattle. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. So it's like, you know, I've been with my wife 19 years. So it's like, you know, I think it was, just, you know, you know it lies, art imitates life. You're getting these right. signs and stuff like that. And I just think that, um, yeah, it just kind of came together for me like that. And then one day, my wife bought me a coffee mug, and I said, you know what? Coffee with Kenfo, let's go. You know what I mean? Man, and it was, God gave me the idea. It, was, it gave me the idea. I've been doing a website since 2016, so it's like it's been five years I've been pushing the brand. So now it's just starting to, like, you know, now it's starting to get some uh, some some shine or get some pub or whatever. But it's like I've been doing it five years, though. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, you know, as with anything, it just nothing happens overnight, over many nights. You know what I'm saying? Of grind. And and talk about that real quick. Like, have you done like actual uh, beans, roasted beans? Or are you doing just the yeah, merch? Like, you know what? How you doing? Well, I do. Uh, I am I am in in a, in a deal right now. What I'm working on right now. Um, to you know, I, I got something. I, I can't. I got some stuff I'm doing with the right. coffee getting ready to come. Right. But as, as of right now, it's just like it's just it's the merch. It's the right. messages. You know right. what I mean? It's just merch and messages. You know what I mean? That's right. what we're on coffee with Kenfo. Nothing with merch and messages. It's caffeine for your dream. See, man, you got the game, man. You, you know got all man? the game, man. That's what's up, man. So talk about before we get before we get you out of here, talk about being a boss as far as making the sacrifices. Cause the reason I we call this show Boss Talk, you know what I'm saying? And we built the whole Boss Talk Nation brand around it, is because mm -hmm. we want to show people the reality of being a boss. See, everybody yeah. see the videos, they see the Jay-Z's, bought $200 million deals, all that. And we're going to get your, inf you know, we're going to get your comments on that before we get out of it. But talk about the day-to-day -day grind. You feel what I'm saying? After you cut the ribbon and it's down time to get down to business, what it's really like to be a boss, man. 
I mean, it, it, what it's like to be a boss is to eat what you kill and speak what you feel. You know what right. I mean? That's what it's like to be a boss, to eat what you kill and right. speak what you feel, like exactly what you feel. You don't have to play cake to nobody to be able right. to just speak exactly what you feel and eat what you kill. Like, you know what I mean? There's nobody, there's, there's no 401k for hustlers. You know what I mean? So you got to be able to go out here and really eat what you kill. And right. um, that's what it's like to be a boss to me. You got to eat what you kill. There is right. no regular shift. There is that you got to put some work in every day, every day. You right. know what I mean? And just remember, forward is forward, no matter how fast or slow you go. Forward is forward. So keep moving forward. Baby steps some days, giant leap some days, but as long as you're putting some work in, you're going to be able to take, you're going to get some work out of it. You know what I mean? Right. So now, like I said, we got a lot of business moves that happened this week. This was a big week for hip hop. And I yeah, think people. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. All right, so there's some things that I see. I'm going to just see how I'm looking at the field, and you let me know if I, you know, if we kind of on the same page. So okay, we okay. had a deal, which we know he did the deal a couple weeks ago um, where he, he did the the, um, the, uh, the the basic Ace of Spades deal, right? Yeah. And the, when I knew, well, the first thing I noticed about that was they didn't disclose the money. So I said, when they didn't publicly disclose the money, A, is a lot of money because he don't want people in his pockets like that. And B, it may be a bigger play as far as him merging some of the shares or something like that. So they didn't really release it. But then when they fast forward to the deal with title and you see that what people, what I don't think people are seeing is to me, it looks like, and, and then we got the versus deal and we get into that separately. But I think for what Jay's doing it's a play where you liquidate some of your assets at the right time, which, you know, like I do financial services, financial advisement, all that kind of stuff. And I'm trying to show people, you see a lot of the crypto taking over. And if I'm somebody who's sitting on a lot of assets, but they may, who knows in six months to a year, if we go through a, 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 um, a recession, if, if something happens with the dollar, my assets ain't going to be worth as much. But if I liquidate, now I got my powder dry. You feel me? And as things go to crypto more mainstream, and now we got these NFTs and all of this, I could just jump right into another venture. Bro, them NFTs, them NFTs is the move, bro. I'm working. Right. I, I got to get on the NFT game. That's what I'm working on right now. The NFTs is the move. Right. So, just what did you think yeah. when you saw it, and then how do you think it may play into some of this currency stuff? Because I think people getting their money so that then when things flip. They already ready and they got they got liquid assets that they can deploy. Yeah, I I think so too. I mean, like you know, if you see people selling, you know what I mean. Like if you see gold rush investing picks, you know what I'm saying. So it's like, yeah, you see that that uh that that Jay Z is liquid liquidating, you know what I mean. So when you're getting a lot of a lot of real cash in, so you know who knows, you might be getting ready to buy a team. Ain't no telling what dude getting ready to do. You know what I mean, <laughs> who knows what's next. With right. this guy, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like, right. You know, but he's, you know, but 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 the, what I do see is brands are started, right. brands are sold, right? You know what I mean? And and I'm like, yeah, Timberland, Swiss, get your money. Right. I mean, why not sell it? Okay, it's gone. You know right. what I mean? It's like you know, it's just it is what it is, man. It just is what it is, man. Like you got to they buying, we selling. You know what I mean? And and see you know, what. What you said was key, though. I just wanted just for the audience to key in on this, because even after we do the live, we, we boost the replays out there. So yeah. you just said brands are built and then they're sold. And in the hip hop community and the urban community, I think a lot of times people is giving, you know, you know, they, they, they don't understand business. So they looking yeah. at it like you're going to sell out. Not realizing that every brand builds itself out and sells off. A piece. It's, it's supposed to right. sell out. Right. Yes. Russell, Russell sell out. Damn, two, three times, man. You feel what I'm saying? So it's yeah. if you have an asset that powerful, this is a way to leverage. But what I think the best part he did was both of those, the Versus and the Jay-Z deal, where the artists each got a piece of the, of the action. They had an equity stake. So with Versus, they made sure each artist, I don't know exactly how much they got, but they did get a little piece of the action. And then I know for a fact with the title deal, every artist got shares or got a certain amount of money and shares or however it broke down. But that's something that you could speak to as a businessman in the game to get people, these new artists, all these new people who want to be celebrities, but don't have no ownership. 
And, you know, just speak to that for a minute to how people can change their mindset to realize a piece of something is better than 100% of nothing. Oatmeal is better than no meal. Right. You did. So it's like, <laughs> it's like this, right? It's like you had better get some ownership in something. Those guys got ownership. So right. they put themselves in the they, it, It's like any time you can break something, start a brand, get people on it, and then when it's hot, sell it. Right. Because you can take that cash, and, and that's not the last idea. There's going to be something else coming right behind it. Right. But you, 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 you make it, you build it, you sell it. Right. You know what I mean? That's, that's what you do. You, you build right. it, and you sell it. Take it. Right. I want cash. Cash liquid. Liquefy me. You know right. what I mean? So, that you know, it, it just, it, it's just smart. It is just right. good business. It's a smart right. business, you know what I mean. And Jay it is, man, he's just turning up this year. Twenty one, he's you know, it's blackjack, man. baby. He's he's killing it. Yeah, you know he's killing I mean? it. It's like you look at these, that's a half a billion already in a year already. You know what I'm saying? But this man, like, you know, what, what did he sell title for? Uh, two ninety seven. So that's three hundred million. Like, three hundred. Three hundred million, but that's after he has sold a piece to Sprint a couple years ago for like yeah, two hundred. So so he just so been dumping it Three hundred. Then how much did the uh, the Ace of Spades go for? They ain't, they ain't even release it, but it got to be stupid. You know, you you know that was something stupid. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's safe to say he had half a half a half a half a, half a, half a, half a billion up this year. Right, and it's just March. Yeah, you know what I'm like, and it's just March, man. Like, it's just you 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 got you got to respect Hov, man. You got to respect what he's doing. You know what I'm saying? You got to respect. You can't do nothing but respect it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, you can't, do nothing but, you can't do nothing but respect and follow. Follow yeah. the moves. Start your brand. Build your brand. Sell your right. brand. Keep some right. equity. And then keep going. And keep going, bro. Yeah. And that's, that's just yeah. the business. Right. So let's talk you about... Folk come me with, they come and meet with some money for copy with Kenfo? Guess what? It's yours. <laughs> <I'll> <laughs> <buy meals. laughs> I'll, Straight up. I'll, bro. So um, let's talk about, like you said, the new project that's coming out. Let the people know, you know, where they can get it. When is that? Is it released yet? Or, you know, what platforms, where they need to check for? Um, yeah, it, it, everything will be available here. I'm uploading everything tonight. So it, it'll be on all the DSPs uh, within the uh, the next two, three days or whatever. So it'll be up a little A, little, little a and B side, respectfully. Yes, Sersky and that uh, and that uh, up to something. Just just two, just to hitting y'all with, 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 with a good two piece, extra crispy. You know what I mean, and just uh, you know, putting it out there, just some good music. So, you know, and this is more behind that way it came from. But I just feel like this is a new season, right now. Um, you know, we've been in twenty one for three months almost, but like at this point, it's like the spring is in the air. So this is right. the first new season of twenty one. You know what right. I mean? So it's like you know, so now with a new season, I just you know, I gotta I got I gotta put something fresh out there on, on out there, bro. I got I, I, I have to do it. I just I gotta do it. You know what I mean? So so. I'm doing it, you know what I mean. Um, so I'm just, I'm just excited for it. I'm gonna shoot a couple of videos and, hey man, you know, put it, put it out there, man. You know yeah, why not? Every, everything you guys, you know, I've been watching, you know, and uh, you was on the show a few like about a month ago. Um, yeah. And like I said, I just been watching the quality of what y'all put out and what is, and it's very strategic. And you make sure your visuals are right and everything is set up. You could tell it's not just somebody throwing stuff out there. You feel me? No, nah, so, nah, we ain't doing you know, that at all. I give you your flowers for that because I'm like, a lot of people don't realize how much planning goes into a launch or just into your brand. And it's like you said, nothing happens overnight. It takes time to really know when you got something. You know what I'm saying? So now I know I got yeah. something. I'm going to really work on it and I'm not in a rush to put it out. You feel me? I'm just I'm just getting it right. So when I present it, I ain't got to come back and keep tweaking it because you only get that first impression at one time. You feel what I mean? So yeah. like I said, it's, 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 it's dope speaking with you. And, um, you know, what I was going to say is Matt and I were talking earlier and I know you got the music. You know, we got the DJs. We got the promo, you know. So with the music, man, what we wanted to do, we have a text blast service, right? And what we could do is all the DJs, all the people, if they text the word Sean, S-H-I-N-E, right, to the number right here at the bottom of the screen, 844-700-2677. You'll see it going by in a second. Yeah, I see it, yeah. 
Yeah, 700 2677. That's our text line. And they text the word shine. You know what I'm saying? We'll talk behind the scenes of what you might want to get a fan, something exclusive. But as far as the, the, the service packs for the DJs, that's going out, you know what I'm saying, tonight, tomorrow, first thing in the morning, as soon as everything drops, boom, it's out. So that's just us supporting what you're, what you're doing with your Thank movement. You. Thank you. know what I mean? Definitely, Thank no you. doubt. Man. You know what I'm saying? Thank we you. see real. When, when real see real, you just salute, uh, keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but it, it take a real one. To recognize to know right. one, it takes right. one to know one, you know right. what I'm saying? It takes one to know one, period. But, yeah, you know? man, so any last words, motivation, anything you want to give to the people? I ain't gonna hold you to, of course, of course. I, I got I, I gotta do it. I want first of all, I want everybody to make sure y'all subscribe to my vibe, call folk. Down. He'll be right back, y'all. You got to unmute. You got to unmute. Okay, I hear you now. You All, right, now. All right. Um, basically, I want you all to subscribe to my vibe, coffeewithkinfolk.com. Um, is this inspiration for your situation? Is a cup full of positivity with me, and the coffee's always black, Jack, nothing but big facts. Um, and I like to say this. When you down to nothing, God is up to something. That's do everything great. you can, and then he will do everything you can. You will you will bloom in due season if you do not faint. So that's what I want to tell somebody that's listening. All that's, right? Man, that's what's Seriously. up. We appreciate you, man. You're always, you know, putting that positive energy out there. And you always welcome that boss talk. You know what I'm saying? If you got anything going on, whatever, you just want to check in. And we I'm be off top. You already know. I'm gonna check, I, we, we, we will be checking in. I really appreciate the opportunity, Jay, to speak to you tonight. I yeah. thank you for, for, your, for your time and energy. Thank right. you all for helping me to put this records out in the atmosphere. I right. appreciate it. Let's, no continue to, let's continue to build. All right, man. Definitely salute to you, man. Much success. Bless, project. bless, bless. bless. Definitely, man. That's what's up. So, yeah, man, y'all see, we definitely got some real people coming through. Um, that's a real dude. He's been out here for a while. He's been putting in work, um, helping other artists and other um, business people get opportunities. And he's here, man. So that was just a, a quick little, you know what I'm saying, interview, man, a little sample. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, like I said, a big, big shout to my man, singer Irie. You know what I mean? We might do a reggae episode. That's a good That's a good idea. You know what I'm saying? But what you got to do is, in order to do that, you got to subscribe to Boss Talk TV. That's what you got to do. It's right here on Facebook. You can also go to Boss Talk Nation. You know what I'm saying? Uh, BossTalkNation.com. That'll link you to the YouTube page. Um, and then all across all social is Boss Talk Nation. We got a, a banging show tomorrow. We should have um, another artist that's signed out here, Soki Sirens. Big shout to my man, um, Big Hef. We were supposed to do it last week, but we had a little scheduling thing, so we're going to do it this week. And then I got my man CEO Ish coming back on on Friday uh, with his whole squad. I don't even know who coming, man. Some bosses coming through, though, man. These are seven-figure you know, bosses. So like I said, I'm showing y'all, we bring in the quality, we bring in the value, you know, they drew people that's dropping jewels, people that's relevant, that's out here doing stuff. We bringing that to y'all and we not even asking you to do nothing but pay attention, right? Everybody else got their hand out. They want donations, cash apps. They selling you this, they selling you this course, that course, but I'm gonna really break it down to y'all, man. Until y'all start really recognizing Boss Talk is the movement, man. And we got other shows coming too, you know, other other content coming too, man. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, you know, we got people all over the world. We got a network. And if you're trying to be part of this network, man, I'm trying to tell you, I can guarantee you we can grow your business. And I'm not even promising, you know, oh, buy this package and we're going to do it. Call that number, 844-700-2677. Get you a boss up assessment so we can figure out what type of boss you are, what's the most effective business strategy for you. Then we're going to set your plays up. You feel me? We got the playbook to success. That's coming soon. So just be on the look for that. I got more stuff for y'all. We coming every single week. We not stopping. The Boss Academy is coming. That's going to be our learning portal where it's not just going to be no course where you pay $500 and you never saw my face and you ain't even get me on the phone. You talking to my assistant's assistant, assistant. All of that's over, yo. You see what Ken Folk was just saying. I'm showing y'all what's going on. 
as far as the COVID IDs. We're going to get back to that on Friday because that's going to be better for a panel when we can break that down. But I'm, I'm showing y'all what's going on, man. I'm showing y'all what's going on. All of this old crap stuff that was going on just a year or two ago is over, man. All these jokers that was the top of the game and they was, uh, you know, the gatekeepers and you got to kiss five people behind to get on. That's over. You can do this yourself. You feel me? You just need a little help. You just need somebody, you know what I'm saying, that's that's setting up the plays. You just need somebody who knows, you know, how to navigate and get you to where your destination is, man, so you can win. You feel me? I want you to win. I want you to win so big, you can hook me up with a play. You feel what I mean? That's what it's about. It's about giving back and paying it forward. But y'all got to understand, stop looking up to these fake so-called gatekeepers, these so-called gurus that ain't doing nothing but living their lifestyle over or off you. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing people out here. I watched the video. I'm not going to talk about the channel because now we're not here to spread negativity, but and I don't knock nobody's hustle, but there's, there's a young lady out here that's a coach. And, um, you know, she's charging $3,000 to $3,500 for a one-day event to sit in the room, man. Right now, I don't care who it is, man. That $3,000, I'd rather have you invested in your business. Now, I'm not saying that my time is free because my time is money. I get paid very well for what I do. And that's the whole point. I'm not thirsty. I'm not. We're not chasing you. Nobody in part of my squad is thirsty. They all making money. They traveling. They running businesses. Big shout out to Just Jay. She got a whole freaking studio building down in Atlanta. You feel me? We got Boss Talk Studios here. We getting ready to blow out about 2,000 square feet of studio. So y'all ain't seeing nothing yet. You're just seeing a little glimpse. We just, like you said, baby steps, right? One step at a time. You ain't got to give them all that today because y'all ain't going to appreciate it yet. But what I'm saying is $3,000 to sit in a room, $2,000 for some bunch of video courses. And I'm not knocking y'all, but I'm here to change the game. I'm shaking up the block. We selling 10 for five. How about that? Because I, I know how to get it. Trust me, I'll put you out of business because I don't care. You feel me? So just know that we coming. That's all you got to do. Big shout out to my man, Willie Dynamite. We're going to premiere his first video that he's going to have a, a segment on Boss Talk. Big shout out to all my people that's in the wealth factor, setting up plays, learning how to invest. You know what I'm saying? Sharing information. The people that's getting money is all talking. Y'all just too busy scrolling. Right now, it should be 10,000 people on here. But that's okay because I'm going to take this video and I'm about to put some sauce and I know how to market it and who to get it to and who need to see it. And it'll be 10000 on here tomorrow. Facts. So I'm going to see y'all next time, man. Make sure you subscribe to Boss Talk TV, man, on Facebook. It's the realest show on Facebook. Everybody else, I don't know what you're talking about. You feel me? I don't know what you're talking about. We got real bosses coming through. We got real guests. We ain't even get started yet. I got my man DJ EFN coming up real soon. You know what I mean? We lock it. The interview is confirmed. Everything's locked down. And we coming. We putting you out of business. King of New York style. You feel me? You guys got fat while we starved on the street. It's our turn. Big shout out to my man Kenny KJ Media. We about to run that trailer one more again so y'all can see it. It's Boss Talk Nation, man. I'll see y'all on the next one. Be safe. Catch me tomorrow night if y'all want to tap in. You know what I'm saying? If the schedule change, we'll definitely be on on Friday. And that's what it is because we the realest show on the internet. You feel me? I don't care who it is. We the realest one in this lane. I'm telling you because I, I, I'm just, I'm not a hater. There's a lot of cats that was down with the community, and now they real Hollywood now. Now they celebrities now. You feel me? We here for the people. I've been a celebrity. I don't want to be famous. I want to be anonymous and really rich. Have a good night. I'll see y'all next time. Check out this trailer. Subscribe to Boss Talk, man. And if you're trying to get your business up, and if you follow me on Facebook, then you know I post my numbers, bro. I'm showing y'all. I'm showing y'all, bro. If y'all don't think I got the playbook, Come on, man. Watch the trailer and you decide. Peace. So you want to be a boss. You're going to be a legend. You're going to go down as one of the greats. Well, welcome to the place where all of that begins. See, for me, I started off in the booth. I was writing rhymes, I was coming up with concepts, and we were putting in long nights to make those dreams come true. 
But along the way, I learned some lessons. That the real power in the game wasn't in front of the camera. It's behind the camera. And as I learned how to go from an entertainer into an entrepreneur, a burning desire to spread that knowledge to others who were just like me started to brew. And then it started to bubble until it overflowed. And the first thing I did was go find other bosses, other people who were like-minded and had a vision and wanted to change the culture forever to provide the information and the resources and the network necessary to change the game. So we formed Boss Talk Nation, CEOs from different area codes, people who are the greats and the goats in their lane. And we put it all together. Because like the great Chuck D said, it'll take a nation of millions to hold us back. And now that we got Boss Talk Nation, you gonna need a lot more than that. <laughs>